Thank you for joining us today. My name is Ardian Berisha and I'm the Portfolio Marketing Manager for Information Security and Management at PCB. In today's webinar, we will discuss about a new security management approach for agile environments. Our presenter for today are Pascal De Koning, who is a qualified information security professional. He has the wide experience as a consultant and fills in the role of the security officer at various companies. Pascal is also an active member of the security forum of the Open Group. And also, the other presenter is Arthur Junkers, who is a qualified information security professional. He has a wide experience in checking security using pen testing techniques. His specialties also include auditing security processes, CISSP, ISAAP, CISA, and so forth. You will have the opportunity to submit written questions to today's presenter by typing your questions in the, into the question pane of the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentations as we will collect and address them during the Q&A session at the end of the, today's presentation. Now, without further ado, we will turn over to, Mr., uh, to Mr. Pascal. Please, you may start with your presentation. Okay. Thank you. Uh, welcome, everyone. I'm happy to present this um, webinar for you, and it's um, the topic is a, a struggle that that I have at the companies that I work in to to get security um, integrated in the agile development projects. And together with Arthur, I I um, looked at wh why isn't the traditional security management approach not working in these environments? And how can we adapt it so that it will work in Agile environments. Um, in the first part of this presentation, I will uh, mention uh, a few facts that, that we also presented uh, uh, in the previous webinar to get you on speed. And these are the four assumptions that we distinguished that make traditional security management fail in Agile environments. And after that, I'll present a model the, what we call the Agile Security Engagement Model. It's um, uh, the, the way of working that we um, advocate for Agile environments and that we try, that we are trying out in practice as well in, uh, at our own clients. Um, and I'll explain this model to you and uh, I'm also interested in any comments or questions. So why is this needed? We see this development of um, systems and applications um, becoming more and more agile, uh, meaning continuous delivery, uh, and, and we see a gap between the traditional security management approach and what's needed in those environments. Uh, so how can, we, how can we keep up with security management? Um, with Agile development, development projects. We will uh, summarize why it fails and propose this new model as I already introduced. Uh, in Agile, one core feature of Agile development projects is that you have short, lots of short cycles where functionality is uh, implemented. Um, it means that it can be managed easily from the project perspective, but it also means that from security management, there's it's it's not a, a one big process loop where you can where you have anchors for for example to set requirements or to do some testing, but it needs a different approach. And what's also a characteristic of agile is that that you that information from one sprint. Uh, feeds back uh, into the next sprint or one after that. So if you find any stuff that needs to be repaired or fi fixed, it can be done in, in the next sprint, which is different from the traditional approach where uh, tra uh, traditionally the security manager would have the opportunity to block the release of a new system unless it were uh, secure. Uh, so it needed to be fixed in, before it got released. That, that works different in agile environments. So the four, we see four assumptions that are made by traditional security management 
that fail in agile environments. And those four are these ones. The first is the assumption that the agile project is capable of translating the generic security requirements to specific controls. So for example, if you're if if the project asks for the security requirements and is given the set from the ISO 27002 or uh, um, a control framework like that, he's um, required to make the translation from that control framework to solutions in his in his environment. And this fails because they have different priorities, being um, the priority to create functionality instead of security. Uh, they have, of course, limited resources. So if they need to choose between uh, a, a strong developer or a strong security guy, I bet they'll choose for the developer. Uh, they have a strict timeline and, well, face it, they find security very boring. And um, um, that's hard for me to imagine. With, I, I've been working in information security for about 20 years, but people do find this very boring and I need to cope with that. The second assumption is that the Agile team has the expertise and knowledge to build secure solutions. Um, what you see here is that, in general, people involved in the development of software or infrastructure uh, don't have those skills. Um, and that's because they're not always aware of the requirements, the security requirements, and also not of vulnerabilities and threats. They don't know the threat landscape, so it's hard for them to build a secure solution if they don't know what the threat is. For example, if you're programming software and you're not aware at all of uh, the possibilities uh, of uh, SQL injection, it's hard to protect against that. Um, the third assumption is that there's sufficient time and money to perform a security test at the end of the development process and have all the recommendations processed from that security test. This is not going to happen. Uh, time is not there and also because the cycles are very short, uh, let's say two weeks, it's hard to, very hard to plan a, a, a full penetration test of one week after each cycle. That's just not going to work anymore. So, um, and also if you get um, recommendations from a, let's say from a security test, it's not possible to fix them uh, in that sprint, but it, m it might be the case that they are postponed to the next sprint, because only at the beginning of the sprint it's set uh, what stuff will be created during that sprint. Um, so the, the feedback of the security test might just uh, feed into the next uh, sprint. Uh, the, the final assumption that we've seen is that, there, that there's sufficient time and money to identify and address all security risks. Um, we, we are not going um, uh, to identify all of them. Um, it's the, uh, a question of priority setting and also um, there's a culture clash between the developers and the security uh, team. So. Um, uh, we are restricted in time and money. How can we solve this? Uh, our idea is that, that, that security management should, um, which is traditionally focused on checking if stuff is going well, it's checking if security is implemented correctly, uh, more like a police officer. Uh, he needs to step down into the mud and work with the um, development team to get it to get security done properly. As I said, the basis for this approach that I'll the model that I'll present in, in a few slides um, after this one, um, it, the basis in is in the previous webinar that we did, which I just resumed with the four assumptions. Uh, and, and also um, 
we are also inspired by um, security architecture concepts and also by the, our work uh, on a daily basis in these environments. The model, as we see it, what could work, uh, has some characteristics like uh, it's risk-driven instead of uh, compliance-driven. Uh, it brings on security solutions, that's the feed and the mud uh, component of it. Um, we provide a set of sub-policies that actually make sense to um, agile developers. And that's not the 80 pages security policy that, that, that we are giving to them, but detailed small policies that actually fit with their need. And the final part is uh, security monitoring uh, that needs to be independent of the development process. If we can't keep up with them, we let go of them completely for security monitoring. And um, so we don't know anything about their project planning. We'll just see what's being released and start monitoring there. So the basis for our model is the Scrum model for Agile. We, uh, we need to find touch points between security management and this model. That's our intention. So in short, um, uh, on the left side you have the backlog with the user stories. Uh, here the sprints are represented. This is the definition of done for each sprint. And here's the definition of done for the, for the whole release, which may uh, consist of two or five or ten sprints. And if that check is passed, then you have the shippable product. Well, first of all, uh, we try to make security, uh, security, uh, security expert part of the development team. Uh, he needs to be partly developer, partly the security advisor. I know of, of I know um, uh, Scrum masters that say I don't want any security consultant in my team. He needs to be at least developer uh, and de deliver stuff. I don't um, uh, if he's 100% uh, security advisor. I don't want him in my team. So we need to have a mix of that, and that will be maybe hard to find, but um, uh, we need it. Uh, if we look at the model again, then it's, we think a first anchor point where we can hook in security stuff is by creating security related user stories, which um, will be derived from business drivers or strategic security risks or compliance duties. I think that um, most of the business driven security requirements will be found here uh, in this phase. And um, examples of that are given here. So as a customer, I want to be sure that the credit card data that I provide for payments are processed and stored securely so that access by third parties or hackers is impossible. Might be on this level. Of course, once you've defined those, it's, it's not it's not sure if they are uh, accepted by the product owner to become part of a sprint, but uh, you need to, to get them at the proper priority level. The second uh, hook that we uh, see is that security requirements need to become part of the uh, definition of done. And as we see it, um, the, the definition of done of one sprint, uh, we think will be most risk oriented, where the security of done, uh, definition of done of a release uh, will hold place for compliance requirements. But so that's not st a strict separation, but th this is how we see how it might work. And. I know a, a, a huge bank in the Netherlands, um, they've put almost all of their uh, compliance stuff uh, in this definition of done uh, on a release base to make sure uh, in the end it's all 
comply with their whole uh, security policy framework. So this is, sorry for the readability, but this is more or less, uh, this is just an example of uh, differences between the definition of done in a sprint and on a release uh, basis. Um, there are different abstraction layers uh, that, that needs to uh, be checked. Um, then, also uh, with, regarding the feet and the mud aspects, we want to provide uh, security solutions that actually work and help them become more secure. So instead of just telling someone, you should make sure, instead of just telling, you should need to make sure that your clients uh, use proper um, strength of authentication, Instead of doing that, we provide a strong authentication service and tell them you need to implement this unless you have a good reason to not implement it. Uh, and that also counts for, for example, uh, a logging. Um, we provide a logging policy that specifies the fields that needs to be logged, uh, so that uh, on that in the central logging environment we can also deploy uh, security monitoring and we are sure that every system is properly seen by the security monitoring guys in our security operations center. So um, here in the project they just need to know what fields to log uh, and from what systems and we tell, we tell them that in a, a detailed policy for logging. So you can imagine that for a lot of different measures, security measures, you have either a, a, a detailed policy or a working solution or a template that uh, helps the, the project to implement security properly fr from the start. And I think it also might speed up their whole uh, development project. So uh, for that you need to, to have a security service catalog that, that contains descriptions of all of those working solutions and, and sub-policies uh, and, or, or needs to provide reusable security patterns. The catalog that I'm using uh, um, looks like this, so that on the left side you see the, um, the OC uh, system stack and if you then look at the platform layer in that stack which is the operating system, the application server, the hypervisor, within that layer you need to implement several security solutions such as authentication, um, antivirus, hardening and um, um, this, this functions as a checklist as well but it's a checklist of available solutions. It's not a checklist of requirements. In the, the left row in, in the solutions blocks uh, is, are the, the security measures or services that need to be implemented by the Agile project. The right row, such as managed PKI and vulnerability management, these are second line uh, security services that uh, oversee or support the other uh, services. And the ones on the right side are most mostly found in a security operations center. This is an example of a security policy framework. At some organizations you see that the high level information security policy um, is, is distributed to the projects and they say, well, this is what you need to comply with, but it's just too high level and um, not tangible for the development projects. So what we need to do is uh, detail these out into smaller chunks and um, give them the small chunk um, when that's relevant for them. So in general, the high level policies are very boring to people where the detailed policies that 
um, actually interact with the things that they are doing uh, will be more interesting. They're, they're also more relevant. If you have this uh, complete set of security servers that need to be implement need to be implemented, there's always a choice uh, depending on the risk or the security level that you need. You need you need to um, implement some security services. Uh, you always need to implement them, and others are more optional. So you need a way to um, uh, create the proper set of security solutions that you need to integrate and you can do that by using security classification or risk assessment uh, on a sprint level. And that can also be used to expand your span of control for from a security management point of view. So this is the security baseline that I use but it's not it doesn't consist of requirements. Uh, but instead of that, it consists of solutions or small chunks of the security policy framework. Then regarding the security testing, within the sprint there are uh, daily automated security tests. These should be just uh, an extension of the functional security test of sorry, of the functional tests that are conducted every night. So we just need to add security tests there. And feedback from those tests might lead to richer um, security user stories that contain more security features. So that's a part of continuous monitoring, but this is continuous monitoring of the agile development process. It's not the security event monitoring, but it's the agile development process monitoring. Here is a slide with some suggestions uh, of security checks that could be done on a daily basis. Some are depending on the language, the programming language that's used. Others are depending on the, the user stories and others are more generic um, testing for um, common security vulnerabilities. Now this slide contains an additional block on the right side, uh, continuously monitoring. Uh, this is monitoring in the, the in the environment once the product is released. So it's not scoped by the product itself or the agile team. This is the whole environment. It just looks at what looks what's appearing new on a network or new in the organization. It checks the security and feeds back to the user stories uh, if ne if necessary. This is uh, how continuous monitoring can be filled in. Um, at one organization we are using a red team for that, that's, that's just uh, um, checking security on their own uh, without being asked to do it. Just doing it and um, feeding back that information uh, to the product owners. Um, we also have a bounty program in that company. At other companies we are not that far, but I think this is essential. It's essential to, to have uh, monitoring independent of the uh, development process and um, also to, um, to decouple the penetration testing from uh, the delivery uh, of the products. So as soon as you see something appearing, you start penetration testing. So in summary, the things that we think are necessary for security in an agile environment is to make security 
a security expert part of the development team uh, to add security related user stories in order to cover security related uh, objectives uh, re uh, from the business objectives. Um, we also see um, another value for a security service catalog in here that provides building blocks that actually work. Um, we also see that the security policy, the overarching security policy is not what you want to communicate to the teams. You need to chunk it down into little relevant bits for them. Um, we think that security classification might help to speed up the whole process of uh, risk uh, assessing, risk assessment within a sprint and uh, choosing the, the proper security services to implement. We see the need for daily automated security tests as an extension of the functional daily tests and we think that continuous monitoring is necessary in order to uh, keep an eye on the whole environment. I told you this already. So that's the end of what I wanted to tell you. Ardio? Uh, yes, Pascal. Uh, thank you for this great presentation. We're sorry that Mr. Arthur couldn't be here with us today. He had an emergency situation that he had uh, to take care of. Uh, we want to inform you that PCB provides training and certification services for ISO 27001 introduction, foundation, lead implementer, and lead auditor. The training is designed to provide you with the required knowledge to carry out audits of information security management system against ISO 27001 and be able to run the processes involved in implementing ISMS as defined in ISO 27001. They examine the certification fees are included in the training price and also participation certificate of CPDs will be issued to participants. For more information, please visit our website www.pcb.com slash training. Uh, now, without further ado, we will go ahead and take some time to answer some of the questions from the attendees regarding to today's topic. Uh, one attendee asks, uh, what, what are the main benefits that we can find with ASIM model? I think the main benefits are that you are able to uh, cooperate uh, from a security management perspective with the Agile development team. Uh, if you are trying to just uh, use the plan, do, check, act cycle of uh, ISO uh, 27000, and one, um, you will see that you don't have all the, uh, you're not able to interact properly with the agile uh, development cycles. And in this model that we present, we think you do get those uh, touch points in hands. Okay, another attendee asks, uh, as testing of software is mostly done according to ISTQB or TMAP, how do you see that in both testing standards, security testing is done, as some models that are built can only be full functional tested on the integration part in the test environment? This means that you can fight a threat a long time after the initial uh, cycle is finished. Yes, um, uh, to be honest, that part of the, um, the security testing, uh, we are still find, seeking ways to sort that out properly. and. Um, uh, so if you have suggestions for that, uh, I'm I'm happy to uh, consider them. Um, this is this area, uh, uh, in, in my understanding, is fully in, in development, and um, um, so I don't have a, an answer for that. Okay, now because of the time limitation, uh, this is the last question uh, for today's webinar. Uh, one attendee asks, can you please define the roles of the Scrum? Um, well, the role that we want to add to the Scrum team is that of um, a, sc a security practitioner. But that, that guy needs to be uh, partly security practitioner and partly developer. 
So that, that's the most uh, important one in, in providing the security solutions. And the other one is uh, another, another very important role is that of the product owner, who is uh, the person determining the priorities of functionality to be uh, realized in each sprint. So we need, the more security aware that person is, the higher ranking the security sto stories will become. So that's essential as well. Thank you, Pascal, once again for this great presentation. And thank you, everyone, for attending today's webinar. I would like to let you know that this webinar will be recorded and posted to our website as well as on your YouTube channel. Once you leave today's webinar, you will receive a survey about the presentation and uh, we would appreciate it if you complete it and provide us with your feedback. Also, if you are aware of an interesting topic that you would like to discuss and participants would benefit from, please feel free to write down your suggestions. Uh, we would like to inform you that next Wednesday we will present a webinar about how to select the best ISO 27001 scope, extended versus limited. Thank you all and have a great day.